from Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. On News Hour tonight, eight dead bodies recovered with 26 injured after bandits attack Abuja Kaduna train. National Assembly wants full blown war against bandits after attack on train. Trade Union Congress outraged with killing of executive members in train attack. And on the foreign scene, Ukraine offers to adopt neutral status as Macron prepares to speak with Putin. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News R. I am Brian Yusuf. Now the news in full. The Kaduna State Government says it has received a detailed passenger manifest from the Niger Railway Corporation, NRC, for the Abuja Kaduna train service, AK-9, attacked by terrorists on Monday. A statement signed by the State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aron, said 398 passengers bought a ticket for the trip, but 262 were validated as having boarded the train. The statement said the passenger manifest does not include NRC staff and security officials who were on board. Aron said security agencies have reported that eight bodies were recovered and 26 persons were injured during the attack. He said investigations are still ongoing to ascertain the status of the passengers who were on board the train and remain unaccounted for at the time of this update. Search and rescue operations are still being sustained. The statement asked citizens to contact the Kaduna State Emergency Management Agency to make inquiries or provide information regarding passengers who are on board the Abuja Kaduna train. And at least 24 people receiving treatment after bandits attacked a Kaduna Abuja train on Monday with hundreds of passengers on board. No official death figure has been released. Fatima Ladan says that families of abducted victims said the bandits have contacted some of them to demand ransom. The report. Bandits' attack on Abuja Kaduna train on Monday has left in its wake anguish and anger among families of the victims. Many are worried over uncertainty about the whereabouts of their loved ones as they trip out the Regasa train station in Kaduna. Well, uh, yesterday night we, re uh, we called his number, but it was not going. Then he has two lines. Then we called the first one. The first one is not going while the, sec while the second one is uh, going, but he's ringing. So uh, he's a close aide, uh, a friend to him that they, that they entered the train together. So they were, he, was, he was able to pick the phone. So uh, he, we asked him about our brother. He said, okay, uh, he don't know where he is, but he left his phone here. Since that time, we have never ever reached him again. And this lady is fortunate to escape with no injury. She says she is a businesswoman returning from a business trip and hoping to find her goods. She says the trauma is unmeasurable. Today, the Kaduna Abuja Highway is busy with motorists playing the road. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, has ordered the troops of the Nigerian Army and other security agencies to intensify search and rescue operations to ensure that the kidnapped victims are rescued unconditionally. For Sani Carpenter, the visit of the Army Chief has played a role to his escape. <laughs> Not all are so fortunate as a brother to a kidnapped victim who do not want to be recorded on camera, says the bandits have reached out to them, but will announce ransom. Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs Samuel Arwan declined to speak to journalists. <laughs> About 24 victims are currently receiving treatment at the 44 Army Reference Hospital, with nine deaths recorded from the attack. Train services have since been suspended by the Nigerian Railway Corporation. This is the second attack on the train, with the recent being the worst, with deaths, injuries, and kidnapped victims. Fatima Sala Laden, Trust TV News, Kaduna. And President Muhammad Buhari has condemned a terrorist attack on a Kaduna-bound passenger train on Monday. The president made the condemnation on Tuesday at the State House in Abuja after receiving briefs from the service chiefs led by the Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Rabo. 
The delegation included the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Isiaka Amao, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, as well as Major General Samuel Adebayo, the Chief of Defense Intelligence, and the Director General of the Department of State Services, DSS, Yusuf Bichi. The President, in a statement issued by his spokesman, Garba Shehu, described the bombing of the train as a matter of grave concern. President Buhari restated his earlier directive that the military should deal ruthlessly with terrorists, asking them to be more decisive and not spare anyone unlawfully wielding the AK-47 weapon. President Buhari directed the immediate conclusion of all the processes for the implementation of the Integrated Security Surveillance and Monitoring Solution for the Abuja to Kaduna Rail Line, adding that it should be extended to cover the Lagos Ibadan Rail Line. He also directed the Niger Railway Corporation management to speedily repair the damaged lines and resume normal service without delay. The president charged the law enforcement chiefs to bring back all passengers kidnapped and ensure that each of the callous terrorists are hunted down and made to face justice for their heinous acts, as no one or group should be allowed to make the country prostrate. The president, however, commended the law enforcement agencies for their prompt response and emergency personnel who were responsible for the evacuation and treatment of the injured persons. Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo visits Kaduna State to condole with victims of the train attack. Oshibanjo was received at the Kaduna airport by the state governor, Nasir El Rufai. He visited victims of the attacks at the 44 Nigeria Army Reference Hospital and St. Gerard's Catholic Hospital, both in the Kaduna State capital. The Vice President's visit comes less than 24 hours after an attack by bandits at Duse Village in Chukul local government area of Kaduna State. The bandits attacked a train conveying hundreds of travelers, killed many, and abducted others. Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai, with heads of security agencies in the state, visit 44 Army Reference Hospital and St. Gerard Hospital to see some of the citizens that were injured during the attack on the Kaduna Abuja train on Monday. El Rufai sympathized with former Zamfara State Deputy Governor Ibrahim Wakala, who sustained gunshot wounds and is responding to treatment. The state government said a concerted effort is being made to account for all persons that were on the train. The governor announced on his official Facebook page that the Kaduna Emergency Management Agency will shortly announce phone numbers that families can contact for inquiries or provide information on passengers. Meanwhile, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, has ordered troops to hunt down terrorists who attacked the Abuja Kaduna bound train on Monday night. General Yahya, accompanied by some principal staff officers of the Army Headquarters and the General Officer Commanding One Division, gave the order when he visited the scene of the Kaduna Abuja train attack on Tuesday. The Army boss said the troops must intensify search and rescue operations, which has been ongoing for many hours. He urged members of the surrounding communities and all Nigerians to continue to avail troops with credible information to enhance their operations across the country. Chinelu Megafu, a medical doctor, had no premonition that the train will be attacked by bandits. On board the ill-fated train, when the bandits struck, Dr. Megafu tweeted calling for prayers after being shot. She said, I'm on the train. I've been shot. Please pray for me. Colleagues continued to pay tribute after realizing that she did not survive the attack. And another victim of the bandit's attack on the train is a director with the National Board for Technical Education, MBTE, Ad Abdu Gofar Mata. Gofar Mata died from gunshots by the terrorists who attacked the Abuja Kaduna passenger train on Monday night. Kanu Focus reports the director did not survive the attack, as many are still missing, while some are at hospitals receiving treatment over injuries sustained. The deceased will be buried in Kanu as the funeral prayer would hold when his corpse arrives from Kaduna. Gofar Mata holds an MSc in management, an MBA and an SME diploma from Galilee in Israel. He is a member of the Nigerian Institute of Management and an associate member of the National Institute of Marketing. The late 55-year-old director is survived with a wife and four children. Meanwhile, members of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, on Tuesday expressed outrage following the death of two prominent members of executives who were victims of Monday's attack by terrorists on the Abuja Kaduna train. The Secretary General of the TUC, Musa Ozigi, was among the passengers killed when the terrorists attacked the train abducting scores of passengers. 
Another victim and prominent member of the Congress is Kwara State Chairman of the TUC, Akinshola Akimumi, who was also killed during the attack. The Nigeria Senate has called on the Army and the Air Force to, as a matter of urgency, bombard terrorist enclaves with a view to restoring peace and stability in the country. This comes as the upper legislative chamber called on President Muhammad Buhari to declare full-scale war against terrorists so as to secure Nigeria's territory. The report. Abuja Kaduna route is a strategic one in the northern part of Nigeria. It is a major route leading the northern parts to other parts of the country. As the bandits have chosen to threaten its relevance, so also the need for stakeholders to wage greater war against them. Senate has therefore come up with new resolutions as lawmakers resume sitting this week. The new resolution followed a motion sponsored by Senator Ubasani, who drew the attention of the Upper Legislative House to the bandits' attack on Kaduna Band Train on Monday night. Senator Sani recalled the attack on Kaduna Band Train carrying over 970 passengers around Kateri Rigaza Access in Kaduna just a few kilometers to the Rigaza train station at about 7.45 p.m. on Monday. Note that these latest attacks are aimed at instilling fear in the people and destroying the economies of our local communities. It is disheartening that these enemies of the people are getting emboldened by the day. They are becoming more brazen. These blood-coddling bonfires have no regard for human life. They have no place in civilized society. Note also that unrelenting attacks call to question the strategies and tactics being adopted by security forces. A cross section of lawmakers noted that Kaduna had become the new theater of insecurity, concluded then that terrorists have declared war against Nigerians and it is time for Nigeria to declare war against the terrorists. It is safe and right, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, to conclude that terrorists have declared war against Nigeria and I think it is time for Nigeria to declare war against these terrorists. Mr. President, we shouldn't allow this situation to continue. We are, we lay back, they come to attack, then we repel, we try to do damage control and the like. I think it is time for this terrorist to be seriously taken as a national security threat. And we should declare a war against them forthwith. In Kaduna, in person, the Kaduna town and Kaduna state as a whole, no day they don't kill over 300 in a day. Every blessed day, no day that they don't kill all, more than 300. Mr. President, sons were inaugurated here. Discussions on the security of our country has taken a large chunk of our uh, discussion here. And I believe and feel that it is time enough for the appropriate authorities to have taken decisive actions to address the security in our country. Mr. President, Kaduna has become the new theater. And Kaduna is where the highest military institutions are housed. The Senate accordingly urged the Nigerian Army and the Air Force to carry out sustained bombardment of terrorist enclaves in the area with a view to flushing them out and restoring peace and stability to the affected communities. Frequent attacks on the Abuja Kaduna rail line has become an issue too many to bear. Observers are deeply worried over why the matter is not put under control. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives wants security agencies to put together a task force to check and repel attacks on the nation's airports and railways. This follows a motion of urgent national importance brought by Nolim Naji at plenary following recent incident of terrorist attacks on the Kaduna International Airport and Abuja Kaduna train within the space of three days. The report. 
The two incidents occurred within a space of three days and federal lawmakers do not find the development acceptable. Nolim Naji, member representing Nkanu East and West Federal Constituency of Anambra State, while debating the motion said 12 persons were abducted by the terrorists that attacked the Kaduna International Airport on the 25th of March, with one person, a security personnel with the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, reportedly killed. This is despite efforts by the military to repel the attack, noting that if something drastic is not done urgently, it may embolden terrorists to attack more airports in the country. If it happens in other places, if they start attacking our airports, the implication is that they, if, even the international airlines will stop coming to Nigeria. That's the implication. And the premium on our, on our, on their, on their, our local airlines, the premium on their insurance will increase will go up, and the implication is that the air, the air ticket will double. Because once the premium on insurance goes up, the air ticket will double. So I, I'm, that's why I'm asking that, sir, that the leadership should come to our aid to see how we can solve this problem. Lawmakers, while condemning the act, called for proactive action by security agencies through the setting up of a task force to man the nation's airports and railways. We must pre present a very formidable prone as a house to ensure that this thing do not happen again. And for it not to happen, somebody, somewhere, must be held responsible. It, it, it couldn't have just been ordinary that these people would drive through the city and come and challenge the security of our airports. For me, it is not only reprehensible, Honorable Speaker, sir, but a display of general ineptitude on the part of the security responsible for security in our airport. Those who used to go to Kaduna by road became challenged because of kidnapping on Abuja Kaduna Road. And then, thank God, the railway came, the train came, Mr. Speaker, and they are being challenged today. Nigerian Railway Corporation had issued a statement that. It, they are going to suspend the activities of the rail along that line. And Mr. Speaker, we were challenged some few days ago for us to have an infraction in the airport, which means that nowhere, nowhere is safe. So Mr. Speaker, if our roads are not safe, if our rails are not safe, and if our airport, which is the beginning point of our airways, are not safe, Mr. Speaker, then it calls for us to suspend everything political to begin to address the critical needs of Nigerians. An amendment on the need to include the incident of the bombing of a train carrying over 970 passengers attacked near Rigasa Station, Kaduna, is also unanimously adopted. Following coordinated attacks on key transportation facilities in Kaduna State, the House of Representatives is inviting security chiefs for an emergency meeting to tackle the menace. Also invited are the Minister of Transportation, Minister of Aviation and heads of affected agencies. We will now join Sagir Ibrahim at the Idu train station in Abuja for an update on the ongoing rescue operations following the attack on the Kaduna bound train on Monday evening. The information we have so far is that following the attack of the Kaduna bound train from Abuja last night, two trains had departed the Abuja station to help evacuate stranded passengers. Now, according to an update given to Trust TV by the president of the Nigerian Union of Railway Workers, Innocent GJ, the second evacuation train had sustained a minor accident as a result of the damaged train tracks badly affected by the blast. Now, some station officials here at the Idu train station in Abuja told us that the first train had left for evacuation operations by 10 p.m. on Monday night and the second had left by 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning. The officials also say that the Minister of Transport, Rotimi Amechi, on Tuesday morning left through the Kubwa train station to Kaduna for an on-the-spot assessment of damage done. So far, an exact figure of casualties is yet to be released by the authorities and also the train station remains deserted following the suspension of normal activities by the authorities due to the blast. 
And still on the Abuja Kaduna train attack in the studios, Dr. Huza Gizu is a security analyst and he now joins us to share his perspective on the persistent bandit attacks. You're welcome to News Hour. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, viewers. All right. Um, so the, the question now is, this is the second time the bandits are actually att attempting to attack the train. It was first an attempt yeah. and now they have actually succeeded in doing that. And um, in what appears to be a, a daring attack, yeah. So, in your, on your, in your perspective, what does this actually mean? Are the terrorists becoming bolder? Well, uh, uh, this is a clear testimony mm. that um, the, the terrorists are becoming more volatile and they're becoming more ready and more organized than our security formations. Uh, it is really a big slap to Nigerian security formations, uh, to Nigerian security agencies, to Nigerian political system, to Nigerian administrative system and to Nigerian leadership for the fact that on Saturday, uh, these criminals have the capability, confidence, courage, agility, enthusiasm, determination, and dedication, who's in the daybreak, uh, daybreak light to have attacked the Kaduna uh, uh, International Airport. Mm. That is a message to international community mm. that the security and intelligence in Nigeria is so porous and cannot be uh, kind of uh, relied on. On the next thing, yesterday, at, mi at the midnight, at the 7, 7.47 exactly, as reported by some of the friends that we, ha we have uh, uh, on the train, the attackers <clears throat> get there well organized. One, it is about 15-minute drive to Regasa. 15-minute drive to Regasa in Kaduna. Two, they launch at, they have buses, so which they use to t cut away those they have kidnapped. They put them in the buses within the radius of 15 minute drive to Kaduna, and they escaped with them, and they have started consulting hmm. the, the families of those who have been kidnapped uh, about uh, negotiating the ransom. And three, it takes the security agencies, despite the, the huge presence of security personnel that we have in Kaduna, in terms of military, you have the Air Force Base, mm -hmm. you have the uh, uh, Nigerian Defense Academy, you have the GOC, you have the Jaji Cantonment, you have all sort of uh, 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 armories and all other formations of the civil defense, the police, the special task force, and where it may be. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the governor of Kaduna State made mention that uh, he has spent trillions of money in in, in, as inputs into the security. Mm. But yet, we have not seen anything. Even though we commend him and we commend the Commissioner for uh, uh, Security and Home Affairs for their determination, dedication, mm. and effort they have made, and political uh, zeals, political commitment. Mm. Because we know, if at all yesterday, RFI, uh, Governor Nasser RFI have access to the, uh, the, the AK-47, he could have been at the, at the, at the scene much an, an hour or an hour and a half before the arrival of the military. Mm -hmm. But so sad, the security were not there to rescue these people on time. Until after the bandits or whosoever the, the unscrupulous element, uh, element may, elements may be, mm -hmm. have already carted thousands, killed many, wounded many, and caused a serious havoc to Nigerian economy. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we, now, we are now hearing and seeing the members of the National Assembly and the Senate mm. just making a, a, a huge amount of wasted time, wasting time and wasting resources. Mm. Because what, what they are saying, yes, of course, what have you been doing? You said you set up, a, there was a committee when the October event happened. Where is the report of that committee? Mm. Kaduna State Government set up a committee. Federal Government set up a committee. Minister of Transportation set up a committee, Nigeria Railway Corporation set up a committee. And I'm optimistic mm. that I cannot vividly mm. remember the court, but I know there was also a commitment from the Inspector General of Police as mm. well as the Chief of Army Staff and the Service Chiefs in respect to that after the, the October incident. Right, so so where, are the, where are the reports? Mm. What, were the, what were outlined as the key issues identified? What were outlined as the key primary recommendations and secondary recommendations, mm. and what have government mm. uh, uh, did mm. in achieving or implementing those things. 
when I heard the President Muhammad Wari was saying that uh, it is now the time to implement a certain policy, mm. that is an insult. Mm. That is an assault on a personality well, so, so this, uh, this, of, of Nigeria this, as a government. This war on, on, this, on this terrorism yes. that we're facing right now, this war has been going on for a while. Yes. So in, uh, as a security and intelligence uh, yes. uh, expert, what do you think we can do? Because it seems like whatever it is we're doing right now is not well, working. Well, let me tell you one thing. And I'm telling Nigerians. Mm. And I'm telling the, the government of Nigeria and the government of Kaduna State. Two things is happening. One, mm. there is sabotage. Two, there is negligence. Okay. So government must to sit to its responsibility. Mm. President Muhammad Buhari remains the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm. But... There are enemies within, that is, when I say within, enemies within the government. Because it has been made very clear, even look, looking at the report of the Auditor General that audited the armories of the Nigerian police mm. by the report as, uh, uh, as released for 2019. Mm. Thousands of arms were missing in the armories. Where are these arms going? Where are they going and how comes? Mm. So it means, if you can check that of 20. Uh, 17, 2016, 2015, 2014, uh, 2013, 2011, uh, 2012, as well as the 2021, when armed proliferation became uh, the subject of the day. Mm. In the, uh, the, the armed importers, the armed transporters, mm. the armed traders, the armed movers, mm. utilize the period of the 2021 in attaining a almost 100% of their vision and mission. So basically... So if at all, these two things will be dealt with, mm. the sabotage. Government need to have a kind of strategic, schemic intelligence mechanism to understand and conduct a root cause analysis why the sabotage and who are the internal enemy, mm. who are the enemies within, mm. who are the external enemies, who are the bilateral and multilateral enemies, mm. and what are the economic interests mm. being bounced on mm. based on the re as a reasons why all this sabotage is happening. Okay. And at the same time, internally within the government, okay, so let itself look into the word mm. negligence. So there is negligence from the president, Muhammad Buhari himself. So there is negligence from the governors. There is negligence from all the security operations. So basically, Lack of synergy so basically what is we a need, negligence. What we, need to do, what we need to have is a synergized uh, attempt and yes. a synergized plan to actually yes. deal with this. All right. the, so, the operational policy needs to change all right. and it has to be derivative based on the occurrence and based on the result of the root cause. All and right. it is not only people in uniform that can secure this nation. Right. There are other much, intellects sir. that need to be brought on board right. so that the uh, whatever will be succeeded. So thank, thank you. you. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you. Um, thank that's you. Dr. Yehuza Gesu, a uh, security intelligence and intelligence expert, giving us uh, uh, his two cents on the current situation of security in Nigeria. So thank you very much for coming. It's been a great pleasure. Uh, all thank right, you, sir. Please. So uh, moving on to other stories now. The national leader of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, cancels his um, colloquium that was supposed to be in honor of his birthday in, in honor of victims of the Kaduna Abuja train attack by there was attacked by terrorists. The cancellation was made a few minutes after the official kickoff of the event and describing the attack as a national tragedy. He said he feels sad about the situation, adding that he cannot be celebrating while the nation is mourning. The APC presidential aspirant called for understanding of guests already seated and urged religious leaders to pray for the victims of the train attack. So we'll now leave you with some pictures of the victims from the deadly train attack.
And still talking in security, bandits have killed another set of 23 people and injured many in two villages of Giwa local government area of Kaduna State. This is the fourth attack in a row by bandits within a week in villages across the local government area. Villages attacked by the gunmen were Ngwar Maywa and Ngwar Kanwa. An eyewitness account revealed that the bandits attacked the villages in the early hours of Tuesday morning. The eyewitness said that a total of 22 dead bodies have been discovered with the help of security operatives out of the 23 killed. They were subsequently buried. He stated that the security operatives have also succeeded in neutralizing some of the bandits and recovered some kidnapped victims. The Kaduna State Police Command Public Relations Officer ASP Mohammed Jaligi is yet to respond to inquiries as at the time of filing this report. And bandits on Monday night invaded a village, Ungwan Bulus, in Zamandabu community at Yap Chiefdom in Zongwankata local government area of Kaduna State, killing about six persons, injuring others, and setting houses as well as valuables ablaze. Daily Post reports that the bandits invaded the village in large numbers with sophisticated weapons while the villagers were asleep and started shooting sporadically, thereby causing the deaths of the victims. The villagers are worried that the several attacks have gone unabated with the gov without the government coming up with concrete steps to bring the ugly incidences to the end, to end the unwanted killings and destruction of properties of the victims. You are watching Trust TV News Hour. Coming up after the break, mystery about Canoe Pond. This and more after the break. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Hour. Now we'll look at some of our top stories. At least 24 people are receiving treatment after bandits attack Abuja Kaduna train on Monday with hundreds of passengers on board. And National Assembly calls for a task force to check and repel bandits attacks on the nation's airports and railways. And moving on to other news now, Gombe State Government has donated 70 hectares of land to the Nigerian Army for the construction of 1,500 housing units. According to the Nigerian Army Welfare Limited, the housing units are meant to cater for the needs of retired Army personnel in the Northeast region. Ibrahim Ismail reports. The Director General Gombe State Geographic Information System Gorges handed over the property and the document to Group Managing Director Nigerian Army Welfare Limited after a tour to the site located behind Gombe International Conference Center. To be honest with you, for Nigerian Army, among the six states we have in the northeastern part of the country, to choose Gombe is a plus to us. And I'm assuring you that if you look at this land, all of this area is vacant. There is no development here. But by coming of Nigerian army here to develop uh, uh, 1,500 houses, housing unit here, uh, is, is, is a plus to Governor Muhammad Inouye. It's a plus to Gombe State government. The presence of Nigerian army, not only here in Gombe State, it will enhance, uh, it will bring the attention of investors to come to Gombe from all over the world. The Nigerian Army Welfare Limited said very soon it will commence work for the construction of the housing units. For us at Nigerian Army Welfare Limited by guarantee, as earlier mentioned, the holding company is specifically created or established to cater for welfare needs of Nigerian Army personnel. And we all know that one of the major aspects of welfare is the issue of accommodation. So. Coming to Gombe is something that is we are looking forward to. I want to assure you that this is not going to be one of those white elephant projects. We appreciate the gesture. We appreciate the hospitality and indeed the support 
that we have been given from the first point when we applied to secure land in this place. 70 hectares of land in a prime location in the city of Gombe is not a small job. Gombe State Government said it has paid about 70 million Naira compensation to acquire the property from Gombe. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. Now, stories of young boys drowning to death in ponds and open waters across many parts of Kano State have been a source of worry to many residents. In this special report, Trust TV correspondent Idris Tivran visits some of these ponds and reports that residents oftentimes use them for different purposes. His report. It is difficult to imagine that this is anything but a swamp in the shadow of residential building across many parts of Kano metropolis. We have uh, many open water here in Kano. Within the metropolitan, we have a promise of water, which is uh, located at Gorzo Road. We have a Ramin Kalanzir, which is located at Mariri Bypass. We have a Krosha of water, which is located at uh, Sauna. We have Rwandan Tata which is located at uh, Gundua Hadija Road. We have uh, Ruan Yandanko, which is located at Kumbozo local government area. We have uh, Ruan Yarraki, which is located at Bacharawa. Then last one, we have uh, Ruan Italia, which is located at Kumbozo local government area. These ponds where children pass time to swim are being used for sand mining, local fishing or stone excavation in some places, but it also kills people, most of whom are children. I know this open water for many years and it kills people on an annual basis. At least every year, 10 to 17 people died here. At lowest, we may record like 8 to 9 deaths. I know this place long before the water started killing people because we do come here for sand excavation. Now there is a lot of water, but honestly it's killing people regularly from 10 to 15. In fact, I had witnessed several incidents where dead bodies are recovered here. Every now and then, open waters in Kano claim the lives of mostly children like these ones, basically because there seems to be no one to stop people from going near such places. Kano State Fire Service is responsible for carrying out rescue operation whenever it happens. We have attended uh, open water cases we attended 113 open water. Out of the 113, the number of people dead in that case is 98 people lost their life out of 113. In some places, residents use these spawn sites to dump refuse, while others like Fulani Hetzman do bring their animals to drink from it. Criminal gangs and drug dealers are believed to be using such places as hideouts. Open waters like this one within the commercial city of Kano are many. And small, small children like this ones are coming here every day. There is no guards or gates to protect it. Not even a sign to mark how dangerous this kind of places might be. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kano. And stakeholders have called for better collaboration between the federal government and other stakeholders to curb the menace of human trafficking and illegal migration. The stakeholders made the call at a public awareness program on prevention and action against trafficking of persons and smuggling of migrants in Nigeria in Oka Anambra State. They said the South-South, especially Edo State, has been the focus over the years due to the number of trafficking offences. But lately, there has been an upsurge in the number of cases from the southeast. They noted that it is necessary to take the awareness campaign to the community level to tackle the foundation of the criminal enterprise. The sensitization program was organized by a joint team of Network of Civil Society Organization Against Child Trafficking.
the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, International and Ibero-American Foundation for Administration and Public Policies. In the year 2021, the Commission received a total of 1,701,357 cases cutting across 14 thematic areas, out of which 913,197 cases amounting to 53.67% were on women and children alone. Of the above total, 158,507 cases were on SGBV. The Executive Secretary, National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, Toby Ujuku, says a total of 158,517 sexual and gender-based violence cases have been received by the Commission in 2021. Ujuku said this in Abuja at Round Table on the current state of affairs during pending cases of SGBV in Nigeria. Represented by Harry Ube, Director of Women and with children in the commission, Ojuku said that it is no longer news that SGBV had become a menace in the country. According to him, no day goes by without the occurrence of sexual violence in the country. And participants at a two-day workshop in Lagos identify lack of adequate information and awareness as factors fueling discrimination against persons suffering from tuberculosis. Non-governmental organizations called on the media to sensitize the public on the need to end discrimination against the affected persons and support them to overcome the challenges. Hamid, Hamid Oyegbade sent in this report. For people who, don't, who do not know, they should know today that TB is the big. For people who, don't, who do not know, they should know today that TB is the biggest communicable disease in, uh, in Nigeria in terms of persons who have lost their lives. It's the biggest killer today. And what deepens and makes this problem worse are two issues, stigma and discrimination. These are human rights issues. The gender-based approach also to TB exacerbates the situation. We're here today so that we can talk to persons who have been affected by TB in the knowledge of their rights, know what their rights are, and not just to know these rights, but also how to enforce these rights. If we understand that TB is not a death sentence, there's less stigma. Number two, when people take TB treatment, almost immediately, very quickly, in a matter of days or weeks, they're no longer contagious. So the more that people understand uh, about the disease, about the treatment, and about the experiences of people who have TB, the more that the average person understands those things, the less stigma, the less discrimination there will be. There is great need for awareness, sensitization, close collaboration between all relevant stakeholders. And to mention very precisely, there's need for close engagement and collaboration between the, 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 the TB affected communities, the legal service providers, the, the, the media, the celebrities, the journalists, everybody. And to politics now, where the People's Democratic Party, PDP in Kano State, is begging former Governor Rabi Musa Kwankwaso to reconsider his intention of leaving the party. Speaking exclusively to Trust TV, State Chairman of the party, Sheo Sagagi, believes that losing the former governor may jeopardize the party's chances in the forthcoming 2023 elections. Trust TV correspondent Idris Dibrun reports that Kwankwaso is believed to have completed arrangements to move to the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP. The report. Nearly 48 hours since the PDP gubernatorial candidate in Kano, Abba Kabir Yusuf, and top members of the Konkosia movement decamped to the new Nigeria People's Party. The People's Democratic Party in Kano is now assuming that the defection of Senator Konkoso may have been concluded. So many people are uh, urging uh, Engineer Rabi Musa Konkoso to defect from the party. Mm. So my hope is that he remains in the party. And that's my prayer. And uh, I would like the national leadership to assist me in this regard. Not even in Kano, even nationally. You see, as far as politics is concerned, Engineer Rabi Musa Kunkusu is an icon. You have to give him that respect and you have to give him that right. But you see, 
as the chairman of the party, even the smallest member of the party, I would not like him to leave. Yeah. Not talk of a political giant like Konkoso. So, of course, I know and I pray that he stay in PDP. A former Kano state governor, one time senator, and a defense minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Rabiu Konkosu is believed to be the most powerful and influential figure of the People's Democratic Party in Kano, whose defection may weaken the party's popularity at both state and national level. In the Northwest, I know people are eager for him to live so that they have a breathing space. Mm. And to me, where I'm saying it, as the chairman, my only plug is for PDP to succeed in the coming 2023 election. And I know I will have an uphill task if I'm competing against Pongkoso. So I will need a more qualified candidate, robust, that can work hard and uh, prayer for us to succeed. Rabi Konkoso's decision to join the new Nigeria People's Party is believed to have been masterminded by disagreement in the party's leadership, especially at the Northwest Zonal level, where Konkoso felt uncomfortable with the zoning arrangement. Uh, Ambassador Kazori has been the zonal chairman for nine years. So definitely it is the turn of Kano. So the zonal chairman has to move to Kano. So we sat down and we agree as elders that each state leader will submit his nomination. And only one form is going to be purchased. And uh, there is going to be affirmation only. But I'm going to ask here in Kano, when we are expecting to say, and it, I was agreed that all forms would be collected from Ambassador Kazauri as a zonal chairman then, outgoing zonal chairman. But I'm going to ask somebody send, going to the national headquarters by a form for the zonal chairman contest. So that means only the position allocated to the Kano will be contested. All the other six states is affirmation. So Konkoso, of course, asks, why if every state leader is allowed to bring his candidate without any question, why should someone do this to me? Senator Rabi Konkoso is yet to make any formal announcement concerning his planned defection from the PDP. But events within the last few days are indicators that the PDP in Kanu is about to lose someone big. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed the commitment of his administration to an efficient tax administration to improve tax revenue in the country. The president said this Tuesday in Abuja while declaring open the second National Tax Dialogue Week themed tax harmonization for enhanced revenue generation. The president, however, expressed concern at the current tax system in the country, characterized by fragmented administration, multiple and sometimes overlapping taxes. Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, and the Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, for instituting the National Tax Dialogue. I note with great pleasure that the 2021 National Tax Dialogue was very productive. It is particularly gratifying that some of the outcomes of the first edition influence tax policy, legislative and administrative changes that were introduced in 2021. The most important testament to the success of the National Tax Dialogue is the fact that the Federal Inland Revenue Service achieved 100% of collection target in 2021 and surpassed 6 trillion Naira revenue threshold. We will now join Chairman Dabeng for business news.
Effective utilization of energy is essential to the growth and development of every economy. However, Nigeria has been plagued with an energy crisis that continues to undermine the nation's ability to grow as it slows down production and hampers ease of doing business in the country, with many businesses stunted by unstable power supply. Nigeria has a lot of problems, which presents a lot of opportunities to be solved. For instance, t communication was an issue. And until we solved the NITEL problem, we didn't have all the telecoms that are here, making millions and millions of naira or dollars, as it were, and creating ecosystems that enable people to function. The same thing with the internet. I remember the days where people would have to go to the cyber cafe and sleep overnight if you wanted to get good internet. But today you have very high internet penetration in Nigeria. You know, one of the highest in Africa, actually, if you go by, um, statistics from the Nigerian Bureau for Statistics, right? And other, other institutions that monitor these kinds of stuff. So our energy issue is one that I think is an opportunity once again. It's been estimated that Nigerian enterprises spend over 40% of their manufacturing costs on energy generation. According to the World Bank, Nigeria's epileptic energy supply costs businesses in the country about $29 billion yearly. It is tough doing business here. It is really tough and this is not helping because automatically what you're doing is that you're shutting down a lot of businesses. The MSMEs may not be able to afford, you know, uh, some of the solutions that are coming up. It means that quite a number of businesses would die, a few would come up. Question is, can we create an environment that enables more businesses to survive? More than 80% of our businesses are small businesses. And they're the ones driving the GDP and driving the economy of the country for, for crying out loud. So if a bakery cannot afford power and it has to shut down, certain livelihoods are affected. If the, the, the small lady on the road who, who fries uh, kose or you know, masa or whatever does suya is not able to solve their energy needs, that means some business is going to shut down. So there are a lot of businesses that are dependent on, on the power we produce, right? So if we don't try to solve that as a problem and create an environment beyond making it easy to register with CAC and all. Nigeria is no stranger to regular blackouts, grid collapses and fuel scarcity, which not only affect the growth of businesses, but the standard of living for many Nigerians. This fuel scarcity, I would call it a canker worm, which has eaten deep into the fabric of the nation because this first scarcity has lasted for over a month. Basically, when I was in the UK January, by coming to Nigeria, I heard of the first scarcity, and now this is March, towards April, and we're still facing the same challenge. For like 14 days now, I've not had light in my house. I've been running on generator. You can see the queue. We've been waiting on the queue for like a couple of hours, you know. And in a country in this 21st century, a country like Nigeria, that has petroleum products, crude and everything, we're not supposed to be facing challenges like this. And these are things I think we should actually work on to, look into, make our refineries work and do a lot of other things because the people of Nigeria are really suffering terribly. And this is actually something that we need to actually change the narrative. It's not been easy anyway. Like me, I'm a sales girl in the market. I'm being paid 15000 When I go to the bus stop to enter the vehicle, coming here, number one, I will not see vehicle. If I happen to see vehicle, the money that will charge me, it will not be up to what I'm collecting as salary. So I'll end up at the end of the month. You see that all my money goes to transport. You can see the market is scanty. There are no buyers, there are no customers. Everything boiling down to the price of fuel and the scarcity. Like my, my neighbor just told you right now. It's too bad, it's terrible. You don't know who to take the complaint to. I have it because many of you are supposed to see. Now they take by fuel. Because when they load us now, the owner of the motor will now just dispatch us, give us fuel money. Now from that fuel money, we go come out our own money. After we buy fuel, at least before before we they use fuel of 16, 17,000. Now we they use fuel of 25, 26,000. Out of 25,000, we they give us, we still they put our money. If not be where be, where we they see collect. If I know they see anything, carry go out. Experts say the energy crisis that remained persistent despite several measures in Nigeria for nearly two decades has been dire, contributing significantly to the rise of poverty as it cripples industrial and commercial activities in the country. Chamun Dabeng.
Trust TV News, Abuja. And now a look at the foreign scene where negotiators on Tuesday said Ukraine has proposed adopting a neutral status and a 15-year consultation period on the status of Russian-occupied Crimea, so long as a complete ceasefire with Russian forces is agreed. Russia's military claims it will fundamentally cut back offensive operations near Kiev and Chernihiv in an order to boost trust in talks between Moscow and Kiev. The announcement comes as after delegations from Kiev and Moscow conclude face-to-face -face talks in Istanbul. President Vladimir Zelensky says Ukrainian forces have retaken control of Irpin, a key town located near the capital, Kiev. Ukraine says it will resume civilian evacuations via humanitarian corridors after a one-day pause over safety concerns. And finally, on sports, Nigeria has crashed out of the race to qualify for the World Cup later this year after drawing 1-1 with Ghana and losing on aggregate on Tuesday. The Super Eagles failed to defeat the Black Stars in Kumasi as they were only able to draw 0-0. In the reverse pick leg played at the Moshida Biola Stadium, the visitors took the lead through Thomas Partey. There were no goals in the second half and the Black Stars qualified on away goals. And that wraps up Trust TV News Hour for tonight. Don't forget, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for joining us.